Thank you. Thank you for coming. It will turn out to be boring. <laughs> I'll turn out to be um, I want to just uh, get rolling here and just have you guys introduce yourselves. Sure. All right, so uh, I'm Louis Volkarman. I <clears throat> Can you hear me? Here we go. Uh, so I work in animation. Uh, talk about madness. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, animation, madness, go hand in hand. Uh, yeah, so I work at DreamWorks. Uh, I, I'm a story artist. Uh, I just finished... Um, a directing gig over uh, doing a Todd's Training Dragon. You might have heard that. You may have heard it. Yeah, uh, Riders Flash. Uh, for, for Cartoon Network. Uh, so we did that, uh, did our 40 episodes. So uh, uh, then I'm back in uh, story uh, over at DreamWorks. I've uh, been doing that for the last six years over at DreamWorks. Before that, I was, was in TV for 14 years uh, on many, many things and shows that you may have. See. Any standouts? Uh, let's see. Uh, Kim Possible. Yeah, and uh, Invader Zim. You guys know? Yeah. Um, Do you guys know Invader Zim? You guys know that? Well, you know, some people go like, what is that? You know, oh, you, you mean Earthworm Jim? Earthworm Jim? Like, no. <laughs> no. Not the same. Both good shows, but Both weird. Same. Yeah, Both weird. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, yeah, so I've been in business a number of years. Love it. Uh, I can't just know. washed over that number of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right number there. of years, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, after a while, it's, it's a badge of honor, and after a while, you go like, no, you don't want to tell them. <laughs> but you, you should mention still noodles, too. Oh, yes. And then on the side, I'm crazy enough to actually, uh, you know, raise a family and also uh, draw uh, this crazy comic book called Steel Noodles, which uh, I'm trying to finish the last third and final book. Uh, it's a daunting task, but hey. Sweet. You know, cool. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Zub, and I uh, sort of won a bunch of different hats. Uh, I've been an artist, uh, um, a, an animator, um, an art instructor, and now currently I'm uh, digging really heavily as a writer. So I'm doing quite a bit of writing, uh, including some things you might recognize. I have a uh, creator on series and image called Skull Kickers. Mm. Yeah, no one knows. Yeah. It's all good. Don't worry about it. But uh, you probably know this other thing called Samurai Jack, which Woo. I'm working on. Which is so I'm continuing uh, the story of Samurai Jack with a fifth season in comic book form, which has been a real thrill. Uh, I've got an upcoming book I'm doing with uh, Disney and Marvel, uh, which is taking the ride journey into imagination and turning it into sort of a full storyline with Figment the Dragon. Woo. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I've got uh, all kinds of exciting projects coming up later this year, creator owned and commercial for DC, Marvel, and IDW, Dark Horse, Dynamite. I'm wow. filling the comic book bingo card, apparently. It's, it's yeah, you, you guys need to work a little harder. Yeah, yeah. we're stackers, basically. Um, and I'm Chris Oatley. Um, I, I, thank you. Um, uh, I, uh, I host Chris Oatley's Artcast as well as the Paper Wings podcast, and uh, I was a visual development artist at Disney for five years until I quit and started my own online art school, and it worked. And, um, who, who's a storyteller? Who's writing your own stories right now? Yeah, okay, there's lots of There was some hand wiggling there. Do you feel like storytelling in general, is there any, are there any inherent differences in animation versus comics, inherent differences, you can go whether first. to the approach or, or to the so first itself. thing. Well, I mean, you know, the, the whole the whole studio system, the way, you know, the, it depends on the studio. There's so many variants. It's like there's depends on the studio you're working for, depends on the system. You know, I mean, that's why the Pixar movies are different from, you know, the the DreamWorks movies, and you know. The, the philosophy is different. So, uh, you know, Pixar, I know it's very director driven and it's the director's, you know, story. It's the director's projects, the director's idea. And it's their job to pitch it to the studio and then get the studio to go, wow, this is really cool and we want to see this. Um, whereas in other studios, Disney or whatever, it's more this. Uh, uh, you know, group initiative thing where they have a development department where they go, they sort of like just, you know, juggle these things around and go like, well, that's kind of a cool story, that's kind of a cool story, you know, and then they you, they put you in development hell for 
X amount of years, and then at, hope at the end of that, you know, maybe you get chewed out. Uh, at the end of it, you get spit out, and then, and then there's still or semblance or chewed out or both, <laughs> and and there's still so so it, you know, it's commercial film making. It's 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 meant to entertain you know uh, a great number of people. So the the level of storytelling is as you know it's it's designed to fit that, um, and I think. You know, once in a great while, something cool will happen where you get, you know, a movie like, you know, say, let's just say Frozen, um, which is they found a way to sort of like balance out, you know, cool story, good value in terms of entertainment and things like that. Um, but in terms of uh, more of the independent uh, side of it, that's where, I mean, that's why I make comics, is because that's my outlet to go. This is the stuff that either they're going, it's cool, but you know we don't see the overall entertainment value of that, and uh, uh, and it, you know it's it's a business, so I get it. Um, so there's there's room for both. You know? I I, yeah. do, I totally feel that where I actually like doing both types of projects. I like commercial projects because it puts me in an area where I'm tr I'm working on things that I would never have pushed myself yeah. to do, and so you're you're finding challenges there. And if there's a structure already in place where you have to try and fit within a structure, you will do things and you will try things out that you wouldn't have done on your own. On the other side of it, I love having my own independent creator on project where I'm unfettered and I can just sort of go, this is what I think is funny. This is, I'm the only audience, you know, I'm the reader and I'm the, the most important person in this process. And as long as I'm entertained, I'm going to release it this way. Right. And I think that you can get great stories sort of either way. And what's fascinating is once you're done both, you can sort of, it is like sort of almost exercising different muscles, where you, you're getting used to, okay, I'm heading into a project, I need to do a lot of research, so something like, a, like I do Samurai Jack, and so you research the series, what makes it tick, sort of deconstruct it and understand it thematically, so that I can fit well with it and add things that, that build on top of what's already there without breaking it, you know what I mean? And then on the other end of the coin, it's just, I'm going to do my thing my way, yeah. and uh, kind of tear it up. Yeah. Uh, can you describe your approach, and perhaps you could talk about both uh, your approach through the kind of more, uh, you know, I mean, corporate and the uh, mm -hmm. collaborative sense uh, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. animation, but then also you know the, the indie approach, but then also Jim, especially I'm interested in, in being handed this massive amount of source material sure. from Original Jack. Well, so do you want to go first on that? Just go down the line that way. Yeah, okay. Um, I, uh, it's fascinating. So. When you're working with an established property, I think people get this weird idea that when they're going into a, a project, or they talk about, oh, you're working with Disney, and you say the word Disney like this corp, like it's like it's Walt Disney, and he's going to come over to your house and hang out with you or something, or Mickey Mouse is coming for dinner or whatever. But it's not like that at all. You're working with individuals. You're working with people. There's a brand and there's a company initiative. But at the end of the day, you're working with people. You're working with an art director or an editor or licensing approval people and really getting a feel for how much leeway they're going to give you or what their expectations are and then trying to sort of not just meet but hopefully exceed those types of elements. So when we went in on, on Samurai Jack, Andy Suriano, who's the artist I'm working with, is phenomenal, he's a designer on the show, oh, he's, awesome. I, he's just killer and I feel like we got a lot of leeway because Andy was drawing it so it was this, well it's going to be on model, he kind of designed the show, you yeah. know, and so we were able to I could kind of get away with things story-wise because he said it was cool, if that was, sort of makes sense. It was like he gave his stamp and then they went, well, Andy likes it so it's good. And so every kind of corporate project is a different uh, learning experience of trying to figure out what a client wants or what the approval process is or what uh, really, yeah, what, what you can bring to it. That Trying not to lose yourself in that process, like I try and inject some of my own humor or my own elements, but make sure it's appropriate to the to the brand or how, whatever you're doing. How did you brainstorm or approach coming up with stories for, the, for that? Um, it's, what's great about it, okay, Samurai Jack, I feel like it's cheating because it's a genre melting pot. It's about an, uh, it's hmm. mythic samurai martial arts science fiction fantasy. You're like, well, it's everything. So I feel like you can get away with so much. There's episodes that feel like, you know, Hanna-Barbera and there's other episodes that feel like you know, Zatoichi kind of stuff, so, and everything in between. So I felt like you right. can you can throw a flag down in almost any kind of genre story huh. and make it a Samurai Jack story. 
for something like um, Figment I'm doing over with, with Disney, I mean, that's a very specific process. So now you're, it sounds really weird, you're watching video of like the, the ride <laughs> and you're trying to pull story elements out of something that wasn't meant to be a story. It's meant to right. be an attraction. So you're just taking people and giving them visual experiences or auditory experiences and I'm trying to create a narrative that incorporates those elements yeah. and that's been very, very odd. And sort of trying to think of, okay, there's no conflict in a, in a ride. You get on the thing and you put the, the conflict is, I'm, what, I'm too fat for the seat? Like, there's no, there's no, you know, you're just going on the ride and things happen and, right. you know, it's a small world or whatever. Everyone sings at you and you're like, that was great. I'm going to go eat something and spend money. Um, and so, you know, how do you turn that into a story with characters and conflicts and plots? And, and that, that was probably the toughest part. And feeling really nervous, like, hey, we could have conflict here. And then waiting to see if they were like, no, no, we can, this is a happy story. You're right. like, no, but bad things need to happen in order for right. conflict to grow, you know, and figuring out how that's going to work. That was, that was a really odd process. I sort of threw out three very divergent ideas to them, very different spectrums, and not knowing where they were going to go, and that gave me, like, plumb lines to build from. So yeah. I said this one was, like, very kind of super kiddy, friend, kid-friendly stuff, and then there was another one that was kind of almost historical, and oh, then there cool. was a third one that was very just like high fantasy because they said they wanted a fantasy story and I was like well okay so I gave them this like not quite Lord of the Ringsy thing and then they actually went for the more historical one and they said well let's give it a little bit of a steampunk thing and so that way I gave them the choice but I could have worked with any of them. Right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Louis, uh, breaking, particularly I'm interested in the How to Train Your Dragon stories, breaking those and then versus your approach to your anti -com. Uh. I mean, the, 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 the one thing I try to strike is like, um, you know, there's, like I said, there's, there's a bit of you, your way of, your point of view of how do you, how do you tell the story, right? So, um, and it took a number of, you know, people need to know you. It's, it's, it's collaborative. Uh, and, and, you know, you work in teams, and you work with a director, and you work with a writer. So, um, uh, the, the cool thing that's happening now is I'm being allowed now in, in just saying, here's your piece of, of this project. Uh, because of casting, you have to cast the right people in the, into these projects that you go, all right, well, we want you to just have fun with this. And just, you know, this is, it's, the, the part of it is really just taking ownership of, of something. And, and if I'm excited about it, and 99% and of the time I am, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, it's it's the people. It's the it's the if your director is the guy, you know, um, you know guys like uh, uh, Dean Dubois, who are you know they'll they'll take you in and go like yeah bring, do, you know do what you do best. Yeah. That's awesome because then then it makes the job. It's then you're not talking about it in terms of like nuts and bolts. You're talking about you're not making corporate Frankenstein yeah, monsters. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you guys are in it's the room. Five percent more sweetness. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there is that. There always be that because it's an investment. It's sure. somebody's investment. Some it's you know, someone stands to gain, you know, or lose money. So I you know that there will be that time where they go like you know make make the eyes ten percent bigger. And stuff like that, which would drive you crazy. But then, um, but but thankfully, there there's a group that you end up working with that you go, okay, we're a group, right? And we're cool. We're making this thing, and it's it's like it's it's us it's us against them, but in a good way. Yeah. You know, it's funny you see them with comics because there is no money to be made. Yeah. We don't have any of those pressures. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we don't worry about what anyone cares. No, no. no one's gonna make any money on this. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. Go, in fact, oh God, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, you're, you're sitting there going, wow, this is really cool, but that's another 20 pages, right? which means it's going to cost me how much right. money to print it. And, right. And, right. And, and, you know, so, uh, you know, and uh, the, 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 there, it, and like I said, there, there's a cool, you know, as much as you go like, well, this is very corporate, right? You right. know, like, they are, you know, it's the same thing, I think, in co in comics, I would think, you know, like... Uh, um, well, there are corporate you, comics, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and it, there's that choice of, like, okay, well, I'm independent, right? I'm going to, you know, so so you reach a certain sort of, like, audience, and it's cool. And then suddenly, like, uh, you, you know, as opposed to, like, a huge comic that reaches, you know, 50 times more people, um, without those guys, you don't reach 50,000 more people or 50% more people. 
there is it's 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 uh, it's it's a relationship that's you know it's 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 necessary. You know, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of cool stuff that's made because you know. Uh, you know, a corporation got involved. Right. You know, One so. of the things I do love, though, about the about independent comics is you also get stories that, like you sort of said, that no one would ever approve on a corporate right. level. Yeah. Like if you would yeah. have told, so web comics is a perfect example of that. Where yes. there are web comics, there are huge hits. Uh, Kate Beaton does comics about Canadian and European history, yeah. and it's like if you said to someone, "I'm going to do these quirky comics about European and Canadian history," they'd have been like, mm, "Snore, good night." But she does this thing and finds an audience because her passion for it. And her excitement to do this yeah. stuff is infectious, right? XKCD, it's a comic about stick figures telling you science, math, and emotional yeah. stuff about, you know, people. It, you could not pitch that to a company in a way that they would give a damn. It, it, yeah, because it, 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 it's, the, in the end, at the end of the day, everybody, I was talking, I always say, talk about value, but it's like, hmm. corporations view value one way, and sure. you, your, your sense of value, everyone's sense of value is different. For a corporation, it's like, you know, they look at it as like this widget that has a label that has, you know, has a bow or whatever. Well, there's so much investment yeah. involved. Yeah. They're putting tens of millions of dollars. They, so they want to know what that looks like. And they want to know that for, you know, for a reasonable amount of, of, uh, of risk, this is what the payoff is. And there's value in that, of course. But then they're, that's when they go, when they look at, like you said, those kind of stories and they go, we don't see that end right. product in that little they don't pedestal. Know, well, and yeah. even you, I think, I think those creators don't necessarily go in like, I've got the perfect sub-demographic. Yeah. Right. They yeah. just go, this is something I'm passionate yeah. about, and yeah. their passion is infectious. It's what carries it through. You yeah. know, and, and what's interesting, people say to me all the time, they're like, well, you know, how do I know if it's a good story to pitch? Or how do I know if I've got a good story? And I go, are you, do you care about it? Or are you emotionally right. invested? If you were the reader or the viewer, would you want to take this through to completion? Is it not just derivative, but something that's fresh that's exciting? Yeah. Right? So if you look at the comic book business, uh, a black and white fantasy comic with squishy cartoon characters you know, called Bone, mm -hmm. there was no market for that book yeah. when they yeah. pitched that book. Yeah. No one wanted a black and white zombie you know, dystopian comic book. Mm -hmm. It did okay. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of it, The Walking Dead. Right. You know, video, video game influenced romantic comedy, yeah, Scott yeah. Pilgrim. Like, that, there was nothing like that, and that's what makes it yeah. valuable. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting. Rather than going in and going, if I take Harry Potter right, with correct. Pokemon by way of, you know, popular yeah. item C. Right, right. Yeah. That's great. Um, before we move to the next, next question, can you just talk just a little bit about uh, how you extracted stories for dragons? Uh, or, or added to the franchise? Like, well, how do you generate 11 episodes worth of ideas in your case? Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, on a TV show, um, you know, it, it, you have your staff writers, and uh, the, the, the showrunners are your head writers. Um, the cool thing about Dragons, uh, obviously the world had already been conceived. Uh, we had this, in fact, the pressure was on us to go, like, well, now we, we get to show these, these characters, uh, get to really spend time with these characters. So, like, well, what kind of stories are we going to tell? And uh, uh, so, there's, there's part of it is satisfying the, the wants and needs again of the studio of like, well, we want to see this direction and that direction. Uh, by the time I really received the scripts, they're largely, you know, finished. Mm -hmm. And and the cool thing through the process, so every show goes through that is you know your growing pains is like you kind of know you know, where the fences are, and then, and then you go like, well, we know, we know what the parameters are and what, what can, we can cross and we can't cross. Um, but the cool thing is that there was still enough left in there for like me and my team to go and say, you know what, you know, the, the, the core story is good. Uh, there's a part of the story here that, you know, we, we could plus this. So, um, Do you have an example? Well, just in terms of, you know, like, just gags and things like that, uh, and and then also just uh, you know TV scripts can be really really like just straightforward rudimentary like if this is what happens, and I think w what we wanted to preserve is the cinema yeah. aspect of of you know I go look the dialogue's funny the characters are funny what else can we do uh, so we said you know let's let's still use things like metaphors and and allegories in the story and you know like make you know, make it make it be like 
uh, extensions of the movie, and uh, um, it, that kind of scared them in the beginning because that means, well, is that going to cost us a lot of money? I hear the cost of yeah. allegory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's a lot of money. That's all it's about. Oh, Symbolism yeah. costs. You know, what? When I, I remember when I, I think I pitched a, an idea about, um, I forgot what it is, um, in the, uh, there was an episode where this dragon had glowed, and it was glowing, and because it was eating this algae, it was glowing. Anyway, I wanted to come up with like this complete mythology that sort of like explains, you know, what what that could be, and and I think in hearing that, you know, you hear visual effects and you hear the dollars going like this, sounding really expensive, and 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 I go, no, it's just it's just we're we're here's your script, and you just want to like we have one stuff in between it that the audience can sort of like, you know, if you're a real, really big fan of it, you go like, yeah. oh my gosh, I never thought of it that way. You know, so uh, so towards the end, they're starting to go like, oh, I see what you're saying. You know, like, uh, and then they, they just let you do it. And like, yeah, that's fine. So, trust. Long, yeah. So I just yeah, building trust on any project. Yeah. The first thing you submit is always brutal because you don't you don't have that relationship. No, no. They're like always going like, uh, what do you what do you want? You know. And, uh, <laughs> but that's but that's but actually, I figured it out. I just go straight to the visual effects director. And go like, Dude, nice. how do we get this done? Then, <laughs> and then how much do you think it's going to cost? And then like, um, okay, you're going to sign off on this, right? Okay, so then it's him and me against whoever's going to You're going to do that. <laughs> <They'll be laughs> my, awesome. I got my, yeah. my troop no. here. Yeah, 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 no. And he's fine with it. Well, you know, this is what's, you know, we work on yeah. large team projects too, though. Communication is so valuable. And under, like getting a through line with all the different departments or with the key people that they, like you said, sign off on it, that you're able to communicate your idea and get them to back you. I think that that's super valuable on a corporate project. Yeah, and, and we, you know what? This, this stuff gets even better because then when you get the, they're like, yeah, go do it. And then you go like, oh yeah, I'm really good. You know, you, you, you feel, yeah, you feel empowered. And then as opposed to just, you know, look, it, it's, it's a multi-million dollar, you know, production. And uh, let's look at it in terms of like you know again extended value and and then and then when when the show finally aired I think people would go like wow okay it that's it looks cool it yeah. it feels you know like again when you I talk about value you're like I can perceive that yeah. you know but that's also that. a, a thing of leadership too I think people get the wrong idea that because you're the writer that you are somehow the end all and the be all. I'm going to write it and you're going to do what yeah, I yeah, say. Yeah. And that's totally not how these things happen. Even on a comic project where it's just me collaborating with an artist, they've got to be invested. They've got to put some of themselves into it, just like I put yeah. myself into the story process. This isn't about you on high casting down words and they, mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, <Star Wars. laughs> like, I, I like it when an artist comes to me and says, I had this neat thing. We could add this or wouldn't it be cool yeah. if... Yeah. And even if I disagree, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Let's all yeah. get our ideas into this melting pot and really play with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a really valuable part of the working process. It is collaborative. Yeah. And if you go in there, all fire and brimstone, there's one way, my way, you know, screw you, like, you're not going to get anywhere. No. I love working with those guys. Those are the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good people out there in corporate rock and roll. Yeah. Mm. Are you say no, I, I've we no. never worked for those people. Oh, mm. Yeah, uh, no, I, I've worked with my show projects where that was the case, and look, I'm I'm happy to get paid, just you know, whatever. <laughs> but you see, but that's the thing but, but, that the minute when you realize yeah. that you have no investment, yeah, yeah. your brain shuts off. Yeah, exactly. You just go, oh, it's a paycheck. Okay. Yeah, I will yep. give you a yeah. I'll do yeah. the bare minimum for you. You got yeah. it. No, the, the, the worst is the worst is um, when when there's even a hint that you might be able to like sort of contribute something, and you go like, oh really? Okay, so you do it, and then and right. then uh, and then suddenly you, your door shuts, and you go, oh, I thought it was going to be this, and then that's when you just literally go like. I'm, you know, I'm taking my my ball. I'm gonna go home. You know, yeah. it, it becomes about that. Like, oh yeah, all right. Well, I'm gonna go home. And gonna I'm gonna make comics. I'm yeah. never gonna be. I'm yeah. not gonna play with you again. Look, if you're gonna pay me crap anyways, I'm gonna go make comics because yeah, then I'm gonna I can make be poor on my own terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's good. And then I take it out on my comic, in which case my comic becomes one thousand percent better. And I go like, yeah. You know, Chuck, Chuck Dixon. He's a comic book writer. He used to say that he would watch he, he, whatever he watched. He would learn from. If he watched great. TV and movies, he would be like, oh, those are 
great moments that really brought emotion out of me, or I've got to think of stories that evoke, you know, like not copy, but evoke those types of emotions or those types of conflicts or those types of symbolism. Yeah. And if it was terrible, it's like he would rewrite it, but with a different genre. Yeah. So he'd watch like a crappy episode of, of some, you know, medical drama or whatever, and he'd go, eh, okay, so if it was Batman doing this, mm. but it was not mm -hmm. a hospital, but it's a this and the Joker and the thing. And he would just craft the story with a better ending. Yeah. He would take bits and pieces and sort of sure. slot them in. And that can be a really weird thing where people ask me, they're like, oh, what do you think? Is, you know, being an active viewer of story, once I started writing in particular, I think people get this idea, well, how do you learn to write? Of course, you have to do it. You have to get better at it. But stop being passive about your entertainment. When yeah. you look at something, yeah. I talk to people and I say, did you like movie? Fill in the blank. And they'll say, oh, you know, it was all right. No, oh, it was kind of crap. Well, what, what is kind of crap? Right. At what moment did you not enjoy it? At what mm -hmm. moment did you lose mm -hmm. connection to the characters? At what moment were you no longer invested? At what point were you like, hmm, popcorn, I'm going to go get some of that, right. rather than <laughs> being engaged on the screen? And at, having that little analysis running in the background yeah. I find really valuable. My, my wife is a writer as well. She's a prose writer. I think our friends hate going to the film club. Because <laughs> we finish a film, and after it, we're talking rapidly, like back and forth and back and forth. Oh, that moment. Yeah, that was yeah. when I was, oh, really? You? Oh, I was over here. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, fascinating. Da, da, da. And if a movie's crap, and, and afterwards they're just like, oh, that just sucked. I'm like, no, not only did it suck, here's why it sucked. Here's why. <laughs> they just do the tea leaves. It's just like, yeah, no. Yeah. They totally lost it. There was no emotional reason for that. And I yeah. no longer cared. And once I no longer cared, I wanted them all to die. <laughs> <laughs> the first 20 minutes, they could all die, and I could have left. Yeah. That was the end of it. You know? and, and that is a, such a fascinating process. We have a game that we play. We, it's, um, we call it few moves. So it's like you watch a crappy film and you go, what is the fewest number of changes we could have made yeah. to that film to mm -hmm. make it, to mm -hmm. save it from itself? That's great. Right? I do a similar thing. I have a yeah. game, I, and I've not told anyone about this, but I call it Fix It. Fix It, yeah, it's the same and deal, right? It yeah. was this moment but it's where... Not, yeah, I'm not a critic. Like, I'm not going right, to write right. my review online and exactly. tell everyone, the movie you love is yeah. garbage. Like, that's not my job. But my job is to understand story for, to make yeah. myself a better writer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's my own internal yeah, criticism. You, yeah, you, know? you, learn, you, learn, yeah. You, learn, you learn more from stuff that's yeah. broken. And, get ideas. and uh, you know, I teach a, I teach a, I teach a story class uh, in L.A., and uh, one of the... You know, we do a lot of film studies, and and uh, I mean, you know, I show I show them a bunch of stuff that works, but then I go like, well, I'm not going to show you stuff that kind of exactly. doesn't work, yeah. And then it'll let you sort of understand why, you know, yeah. how and why, and 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 it's not it's not some you know we're not trying to assassinate you know the, the, these people tried to make a movie, they felt really strongly about it, and then they did it, or for whatever reason we will never know uh, right. unless somebody actually. Well, there's so them. many factors but, in a production like that. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has the best of intentions, and then it comes together, and you're like, and you have, oh, yeah, but did that? <laughs> but there's so much, yeah, there's so much uh, to pick up, you know, in terms of, uh, oh, all right, it's all just these choices that they made that choice instead of that choice, yeah. and, and like you said, it, it's it's not it's it's a right or wrong thing, but it's also it's just for you to go like, um, okay, now uh, as I go forward. And either stuff I write, or don't make that mistake. Yeah, or I or I watch something, yeah. and I'm a little more aware of like, huh, okay. You know? So I, I teach at an art college in Toronto uh, called Seneca, and I'm one of the courses I teach is animation history. So we watch films all the way from like you know Little Nemo, mm -hmm. 1911, all the way to modern day, and watching early like Warner Brothers. So you got you know Charles Jones before they called Chuck yeah, Jones, yes. and you've got. Uh, Frizz Freling and all those guys, and the earliest Warner Brothers cartoons, they're not funny, but all the ingredients are there. You can hear yeah. lines from Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck that should work, and they actually, in some cases, redid those jokes in later cartoons, and they did work, right. mm -hmm. but it's just like the timing's a little off, or yeah. the, the inflection's a little wrong. They got there's, better. Yeah, yeah, there's this weird moment in, in some of the early Bugs Bunny cartoons where they forgot, that they didn't forget, they didn't realize what made Bugs Bunny work was that he's the everyman that gets bullied and then sort of gets his revenge on, you know, Elmer Fudd or whoever. The early cartoons, he's the bully? He's, like, a, he's a total yeah. jerk? Yeah. And yeah. so you get about the one minute mark and you're like, God, I hope Bugs Bunny dies. Yeah. <laughs> this is not funny at all. Yeah. 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 It's like I, a I, malicious, like, bully. And right, it's like, right. mm, yeah. yeah. Bugs Bunny, good job, pal. We, you uh, know. We, have a, we have a lot of uh, storytellers in the audience. And um, uh, I assume making your own and the projects, is that accurate? Yes, Ooh. it's nodding, it's good. Yes. Um, and so, um, what, what do you guys feel like is, because I know a lot of 
people writing stories get lost along the way. It happens to everyone. And um, I find when I discuss these stories with them, it's often um, they started moving forward without sort of a set of essential ingredients. Right. Um, what do you feel like is necessary for starting or really committing to the writing process? What do you like to have kind of, what pieces do you like to have on the table before you kind of really dive into it? Yeah, start oh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean, I, you know, I, I always want to want to try and say something. That's like really, you know, uh, that, that's my big, sort of great big piece. And, and again, I teach this class, and I, I keep saying like, you want to try and say something. What is the story um, about? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's 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 uh, and in, in in this class, you know, you know, I, I try to sort of boil down these things into just simple concepts, which is like theme, and and what's the big idea of the story, and then what's the lead behind for the audience? Because and the audience is the is you have to have the reverence for the audience, whether it's printed or whether it's animated, or live action doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's the, the great moments, uh, or in any story, it doesn't matter what it is, when you leave a room and you felt touched or something like that, that, uh, yeah, they, they were, that doesn't happen by accident because uh, creators are conscious about what you, what the audience is going to, uh, 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 when they walk away, long after you tell your story, that it's still in their head and they still, them. yeah, and it's, it, it's, it, that's, Incredible because that's uh, that's you reaching out to an audience and it's it, it's cross cultures or whatever, and that that's a very high goal. But I go if you're not going to shoot for that, right. Then, right. then then you know then what's, what's the point? The point? I, I get this all the time where I'll say to people they'll they'll pitch me a story and they'll say oh I've got this story I want to work on. And I go oh, great tell me about it, and I say what is the story about? Yeah. And they'll always go plot. Yeah, always, there's a guy and he's got a gun and he's like <laughs> right. running across a forest. It starts with a guy yeah, running yeah, across yeah, a forest yeah, yeah. and there's these like wolves chasing him or like whatever. It's robot, post-apocalyptic, angel, demon, unicorn, <laughs> yes, fart, like whatever right. thing. And they tell me all these stuff. They tell me stuff. And I go, that's not what the story's about. Yeah. Those are things happening in the story. That's plot. That's character. I want to know what the story's about. Why does this story need right. to be told? Yeah. And what are you bringing to the story? And one of the things that people say to me, I want this to be like Blade Runner. And I go, but we have Blade Runner. Right. It's a great movie. Yeah. Really like yeah. it. Why do we need pseudo photocopy Blade Runner? Mm -hmm. what, are you, what can you say about yeah. people, technology, yeah. life, <clears throat> society that is worth making a story about? That is not just going to be, eh, I kind of riffed Blade Runner and wouldn't it be cool if people compared it to Blade Runner? Right. And where, I went, where do you guys think this comes from, though? Where do you, where do you, well, people love this stuff. From. They want the, the but as admiration the and the yeah, love. It comes I think. from a good place. I yeah, think. They, they love that thing so much that they want to be associated with something like that. And I oh, get I'm it. sorry. I mean, like, but where do you pull from? Where do you pull oh, your the own. thing you want to say, the, uh, the capital A about, as you were Oh, I, like, it sounds kind of weird. Uh, I, there's that old saying of write what you know, which I think yes. is a kind of a false statement mm -hmm. because it's only half the statement. Mm -hmm. Write what you know and try to know a lot. Right. Have life experiences, have emotional experiences, travel, meet people, do things, I agree, yeah. and then bring those experiences yeah. out yeah. into your work. Not necessarily, hey, I went to another country, so I'm Therefore, gonna write about that country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just, you have an interaction with a human being and you go, I, or look at people, perceive yeah. the world around you, and then try and impart those things into a story about life, about yeah, love, it, about whatever you, you think is important. You yeah, know. it's 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 like you, you know, th thematically you want to be kind of really primal. Like, yeah, it, it's 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 it doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, it's really just the basic emotions. It's and love, it's to hate, be, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's that. But you're not going to outwardly tell a story that's like, oh, it's it's about love and and, and so. But but it's that's. That's in the, again in the end. That's what people are going to perceive and go like, "Oh God, why? Why am I feeling this? Right? And why is this so familiar to me?" It's right. because that's what's familiar to you is the emotions familiar to you. Now, it's the hard part is like again making things flow where you're being fed all this stuff and it still feels correct. It still right. feels relevant, but it doesn't feel contrived. Because right, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is so once you but if you have that core concept and you feel that that core concept is really deep sort of strengths to it. So I'm working on a story right now that is about that the older generation 
always feels frustration as they're being swept away by the new generation. Yeah. And that there is always that there conflict yeah. of, I was important and now you're the new important and I can't handle that. Right. And that was yeah. sort of the, the juxtaposition of the story. And then it was figuring out where it was happening, who was in who, it, and what. Yeah. Who, but what, what the story's really about is generational divides. And as one generation moves away, they can't deal with that transition. And so that's everything. Everything else is the trappings and the characters yeah. and the place the plot and, that's going to make yeah. that hopefully come through to people. And it won't be, it's not called like generational push go. Like it's, right. yeah. there's all sorts of other cool stuff. There's a supernatural element and there's all these other things. But if you had to boil it all down and distill it all away, that's what's left behind. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's just, people want to be validated. That's, I mean, when you, when you, when you, you want to be in, you want to go on a journey in a story, right? You're sure. going to be watching and go like, God, all this stuff happens. But in the end, really, it's just a validation. It's almost you're paying off the audience. You go yeah. like, you well, know. you're making a value judgment. Yeah. You're saying to the audience, this is what I think is important. So if you do a story, and it doesn't have to be a happy story, it doesn't have to be an uplifting story, you can yeah. say, life is about pain and we all die. That's yeah. a valid story. Yeah, it's it a totally valid story. Yeah. And there are movies like that, and they are moving experiences. It's probably not going to be a blockbuster, you know, no. like hit because people don't generally go to the movies and go, you know what? I left the theater and I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> you got to check this sucker out. Yeah. You're going to line up around the block for this puppy. But there, are, it's a valid story. It's it is, just yeah. you got to know what your audience is going to be in the in the viability of that audience. If you're going for mainstream summer blockbuster entertainment, people no. want to come out with a smile on their face. And I'm going to finally, I'm going to make, I'm going to actually criticize a film. I'm going to, I don't normally do this. But it, compare what, for example, Marvel is doing with their superhero movies, which are always a damn good time, popcorn movie, mm -hmm. people walk out like, Avengers, man, awesome. Yeah. And then compare that to like uh, Christopher Nolan's DC films, where you walk out and you're like, mm, I don't feel good. I <laughs> <not understand. laughs> yeah. Why did Superman, my yeah. daddy know? Like that was weird, you know? And so, but, but you look at those two films, and I went to both films, and you walk out of the theater of Man of Steel, and everyone was just sort of like, Superman, yep, exactly. whoa, dude. And, and then the Avengers. I mean, tons of people died in the Avengers. New York crumbled yeah, and yeah, terrible things. Yeah. And you're like, dude, there was that moment when the Thor ripped Loki around like a rag doll. And we had a great old time. That was the yeah. best. And you're like, that's what they're playing on. And I look at that, that trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And I'm like, good times. Everyone yeah. knows. I don't even, be like, the general audience doesn't know who those characters are. But right. the thorough line of good times is totally in that trailer. Yeah, yeah. I watched the trailer for the X-Men movie. And I went... I'm, that's yeah. sad. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> There's a lot of sad people. That sad bald guy and sad nerdy guy before he was bald. And yeah. Sad guy with the claws that pop out of his hands. And sad people cry time. So much and I don't think like yeah, people yeah. are in the theater going, man, I can't wait till yeah. sad time. This yeah. is yeah. Excellent, sad time. Like I'm just like, you know, it doesn't, I don't know. It's just me. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I'll go see it. I like that time. Sure. Any, any other essential ingredients? And then, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> any essential ingredients? Okay. Is like cool. Questions. So we'll yeah. do a couple of questions. essential ingredients, and then we'll do uh, a couple sure. questions. Any any others that you have other than the about? Uh, just essentially, I mean, again, I, just the core idea of the story. I think uh, uh, you know, you, it's your it's your uh, again wanting to say something to an audience. You're passionate about it. Like I have to tell this. Yeah. There's something molecularly like necessary for you to go. Like I have to tell the story. It's like, um, you know, it's like in Close Encounters where like I have to go to that mountain. There, it, there's, there's that. Making that mashed potato. Yeah, making a making mashed yeah. potato. You know. They didn't get that joke. None of them saw Close no. Encounters. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, come on. Come on. I'm just suggesting that you build your yeah. characters out of mashed potatoes. You build your characters out of mashed potatoes. And and. It, there, there, it's everything. It's like there's a, you know, and and uh, yeah, don't. I, I'd say write. A, you know, I teach in the classes uh, to write out, outlines, and I go, don't do anything. Don't do any heavy lifting until yeah. you understand and what you can try to say. Yeah, you know, what you're trying to do, and I and I said, you know, writing for your friend, and I and and I go, and they immediately think like. Oh, I have to go to take a writing class. I'm like, no, it's you, a pencil and a pad of paper. And an experience and, that and, only and, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, and you just go write, yeah. write, a, write the whole story in like, first write it in a sentence, right? If you can boil it down in a sentence. And then and their then, answer is always, no, yeah. no, it's more complex than it's that. It's like, like, no, it's not it, good. Like, <laughs> one half is, you know, and, and then, and then Did write. You see the Phantom Menace? <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What was and, that story about? <laughs> 
Pottery. Jar Jar. Oh, trade disputes. disputes, right. Oh, yeah. another We're, fun day in trade <laughs> dispute galaxy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but, um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you on that. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's uh, it, that's, I mean, that's how I work. And when I started mentoring people uh, when they wanted to learn story, uh, particularly storyboarding, that's how I boiled it down to. Let's, so let's start with it as, because I said, writing is storytelling. Okay. Uh, uh, people immediately think, let's start drawing, right? Oh, it's and you, distilling your ideas yeah, yeah. And, and so communication. Yeah, and I said, because when you're writing it, you're also wrapping your head around your story. And once, in fact, most, I mean, for me, I'll write something, and at the end, when I finally feel like, that, that is, that is <laughs> exact. I actually don't even, I'll still, I'll look back and I'll read back you're to what I was writing. it again. Yeah, and I, and I go... Wait a minute, I just suddenly figured it out while I was writing it. Yeah, well, and this is also why it's really important to get the ideas down. I have these people say to me, oh, like, it's almost like in their head it's perfect because they never have to get it out. When you put it on paper and you see all the holes right. that are yeah. in there, exactly. well, that actually doesn't connect to that whatsoever. Yeah. But up here it was perfect that yeah. I was already yeah. autographing yeah. the finished book and everyone was <laughs> it. And that's also the difference between people who want to write and people who want to have written. Yeah. And yeah. that sounds very insulting. They want a book. Like, yeah. hey, you want a book? That's great. Go print one. But if you want to make stories, that's your goal. I love yeah. coming to the show, and I love meeting people that, that have enjoyed my work, and I love autographing stuff or talking to people about it. But that is, that is dessert. Mm -hmm. The meal mm -hmm. is let's make a great story. Yeah. And if you don't enjoy that, that's not good. That's not good. You've no, you got to no, really, because no. that is a difficult thing, and that is a time-consuming thing. And you've got to have passion for the building process, I think. Sure. Um, and, and when you're talking about theme, when you talk about ideas, uh, I, oh, I get to put my website. On my website, so <laughs> jimzub.com, uh, J-I-M-Z-U-B, um, I've got a bunch of tutorials. And one, I've got a, a five-part one all about the pitch. And the pitch is trying to get it down to one page, trying to get it down to one yeah. paragraph. Yeah. Get it from the, the macro, and then you go into the micro. So you start with the big idea, and then you show why, how you're going to present that idea all the way down in one page. And they're just like, well, it's so much more complex than that, and then it's, then it's not good. I want to hand one page to an editor, to a publisher, yeah. and if they like it, they'll ask me for more. Yeah, but right. don't hand them a telephone book and go, here, right. you, I just right. ruined your weekend. Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they they just won't read it. They right. won't get it. They won't deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so some of my best stuff has been the simplest to explain. <clears throat> and the complexity comes in the building, but not in the pitching and not in the core concept. No. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, Louis, anything else you just don't go forward with? Um, or usually, if you had it your way all the time. Uh, well, I mean, for, for just the comics itself, it's not, again, it's not until I completely, you know, there's this thing about uh, being the god of your world or whatever, and uh, it's one of the things that, you know, in taking these classes, uh, you go, go see Robert McKee or whatever, uh, and then you, there's the, that's the one big thing in taking his seminar was saying, like, Nothing happens in your stories that you don't know anything about. So I spent, I spent, huh. so I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the time to write it, write the entire world backwards and forwards to a point where if somebody asked me, well, what, what was gonna happen, at, you know, at the life of this character? What's gonna happen in here? What's happening here? What's happening there? I could just go like, oh yeah, that's what happens, and I don't have to be sitting there going like, I'm gonna make up something as I go along. In which case, then. You're, you're just spinning your wheels. Right. So um, so I spent the time for a while, just until, again, after the, at the end when I explained the life of this character from the day this character was born, the, you know, in, in broad strokes even, um, then I felt like I was ready. Because then I, right. you know, and then in fact, I had a friend, uh, a guy that was, a friend of mine that just, you know, he would read my stuff. And he, he he's a great, you know, he has not, no investment in it. And he'll tell me whether it sucks or not. And then, which is cool, uh, don't ask your mom, because your mom will say, like, oh, this is great, honey. Wait, wait till um, your friend tells yeah. you it sucks, and then ask your mom. And then yeah, ask yeah, your mom. Yeah. Mom, you got to pick me uh, back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> mom, please. My mom can't remember the name of my comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, but he, he, he had all these questions, because he sees the character, and I go, like, he had all these questions, like, well, why, why did this happen to her? Um, and, and then I just, I was blurting it out like I knew this person. And it was, uh, and I, I go, wow, I know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know I knew it. I knew, yeah, yeah. I knew it. So then now, now, you know, when I'm doing the comic, it's, I, I have an outline, but I'm, you know, I have enough room in there to know where I'm going, to know where the, at that point, emotionally, what, this, what is this character feeling, 
where are they feeling? And so I never get lost. I'm right. always going like, okay, yeah. Then, then the rest of it is just details like, okay, her hair flips over this way because the wind's going that way. Then it, those are just details. Yeah, I'm not going to play devil's advocate, but I'm going to make a crucial, I think a point that, that's crucial on that. There are people who will plan endlessly without oh, yeah. telling the story. Yeah, they, yeah. they won't, that, that the point. planning, it's like the people who obsess over reading how-to books yeah. because they will never do. Yeah, correct. And so don't get yourself into a state where you're not doing. The best experience is to finish things, yeah. finish stories, short stories if you're just getting started, uh, simple stories, get them done, learn from them. That is the best experience. You can read a hundred how-to books. You can read tutorials till you're blue. And I've written a bunch, and I, you know, great advice, whatever. But you, the best learning advice you'll have is by building, doing things, finishing it, and then looking back on it as critically as you can, yeah. and then trying to do better next time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, last year, I literally scripted a thousand comic pages. That was not my plan, but that was the way all the freelance projects and my own work came together. And by the time I finished, uh, what had happened was I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was talking about page count. And I was like, I had a crazy page count. And he goes, well, what was it? I don't know. And so I went back and counted all these things. I said, scripted like over a 1,000 pages. And he goes, that's why you're better now. And I went, "Wow, yeah, you're right. Like, I'm not, I am yeah. now the writer that can write the stuff I'm doing now. I'm not the writer that could do that a year ago or two years ago. And I hope that in two years from now, I look back and I go, what a hack. Like, just, you know, let's, let's keep the ball yeah. rolling, you know. And that's pure experience. You must. Yeah, you learn put, by doing. Yeah, it's you like, gotta do it. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it, nothing gets done. You know, so until uh, you know, I mean, there's there's stuff now I unearth, and you, you said you go look at it, and you go, and you you, you look at it because you can laugh at it, and you go like, right. God, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Why? What was I thinking? Right? You know. And then, but it's also a good measuring stick. Of well, like, it's kind of a compliment to yourself when yeah. you realize how far you've come. Yeah, how far, how far you've come. Yeah. And you will see it. You know, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a process. And it's a muscle. It's like you're working out, you know, and, you know, you know the common sort of just thinking is that uh, the more you do something yeah. repetitively, you get better at it. I've got it. this with my students as well. By the, time, by the time they finish a project, they're almost always, they're handing stuff in and they're like, oh, I know I could have done it better. I'm like, that means that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You can recognize you can do yeah. it better. You finish the project and now you're the person that finished it and can do it better, that's but you awesome. couldn't have if you would have never That's done. a good space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have five minutes. Perfect, um, we any, just uh, ate all the time. Yeah. Any, any <laughs> questions? <laughs> Make them good. So you talked a lot about working um, in corporate environments, um, I guess on... And we have um, the scars to prove it. Mm -hmm. License tigers or whatever. And, um, I, and the struggle to kind of keep engaged with mm -hmm. the product. And so um, I kind of have like two parts question, but I guess for time you can answer whichever one sounds more interesting. Um, have you ever like worked on something where there was so much interference or whatever that you just couldn't had to walk away from yes. it? <laughs> um, yes, 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 yes. The other was, was have you worked on something that you enjoyed so much it was like your own work? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, you know, I work, I've worked on so many shows, uh, and, you know, there's a, t I get, there's a takeaway from all those shows. I learned, it's possessive. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, but, but, and then there's just certain shows where, um, when you felt like you were hitting your stride and then it was over, and then you, you know, um, it shows like, you know, like I worked on a show called The Mighty B for Nickelodeon, and it was a show that every day was just a joy to work on. Um, and and the, the guy that created it, um, you know, gave, gave, again, he gave me the keys to his creation and said, take, go, go some, do something with it. And that was incredibly empowering and uh, just a great group of people. Uh, and you would hope every project's like that, totally. but it, it's not. And then, and, and then there are places where you go, um, I'm, I'm, not gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fulfill my you know, right. obligations, and then uh, goodbye. So, um, yeah. Samurai Jack right now, the first couple issues I was so nervous. I sent in my first script and I was just terrified that I was, I felt I had done the best I could do, but what would they say? And they came back, my first issue came back with literally no changes, and the editor called me and he said to me over the phone, he goes, I'm going to read you your feedback. And I was just like, oh God. And he goes, <laughs> approved. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? And he goes, that never happens. I'm like, oh my God. And so once I got that confidence and Andy and I started riffing on each other really strong, now I feel weirdly possessive. I know Samurai Jack's not mine, and I know it never will be, but I feel like we're, we've got this great alchemy going right now, right. 
And I joked with, uh, the, I was talking to the head of IDW the other day, and he said, you know, we, we're loving the book, we're having a lot of fun with it, we want to keep it going. How long are you on for? I said, how long will you give me? And he goes, no, no, like, like how many do you think you can do? How long will you let me stay? <laughs> you know, you're going to be shutting the door, I'm going to be like holding on. <laughs> no, I said to him, I, my joke number was, I said, uh, I'm going to do 53 issues. And he goes, what? He said, there's 52 episodes of the show, and I want to have one more. <laughs> and he goes, ooh, ballsy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll ever get there, and I doubt we'll get those kinds of numbers. But, but that's how committed I feel now, and that's how good of a, uh, an impression that, that that's the experience that I've had there. So, yeah. That's great. Hi. So Hello. you guys hey. all have these kind of side projects that you feel like are, are stories that you're not able to tell through your corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. and. I'm a student who's studying animation currently, and I want to break into the industry, but I'm worried that the storytelling that I want to do is going to be forced into these kind of side projects. And I'm just wondering what your perspective on is it, if the stories that you feel like you want to tell but aren't as marketable can ever become. You, you have so many more outlets now yeah. than ever yeah, before. Exactly. Like the internet, <laughs> this thing. I mean, you, you, putting films up on YouTube or if it's animation, right? Or, yeah. I mean, no one can stop you from doing that. Your own independent production, put it up on Vimeo. If it's a comic book and you're putting it on the web, you don't need a publisher, you don't need a printer. You don't need anyone to tell you what to do. You can do your corporate stuff, and you can make your money and, and pay your rent. And if, if that's not fulfilling enough, if that doesn't fill the creative well, then you have such phenomenal outlets to be able to do the things the way that you want to do them. And don't think that you have to you know, correspond to, to your corporate day yeah. self you I'm know, to do that. I don't think there's any way that these may be combined in the future. Like, how would these obstacles that people feel like certain stories aren't marketable? Or well, the great thing is, is that the, the, yeah. I mean, the internet's the ultimate leveling field because it's something can become crazy popular on its own merits. You know, McDonald's.com is just as close as Skullkickers.com, my mm -hmm. website. You type it in, you go to the website. There's it has a little more money in it, but the <laughs> point is, is that you. Yeah. What's that? Well, it's pretty good. No, but but the point is though, is that it's all equidistant, and so. It's about the merit of the yeah. work. You know, yeah. the, the, the biggest comic right now is not Superman or Batman or Spider-Man. It's uh, Penny Arcade. And they have millions of readers. And they have a convention. And they are yeah. a brand that's known around the world. And they're two guys that made the stories and the things that they wanted to do. And if that doesn't empower you to feel like you have the ability, then I don't know what else to say. Because that's the media that we're living right now. Yeah. And that's what's possible with the right idea at the right time. That's not to say that we all deserve to be millionaires, <laughs> but that you are not limited in the yeah. ways of previous no. generations. So. No, there's, there, in, and I mean, essentially, there, you, you'll get to a point where you go, if you feel strongly enough about, you know, and I've, I've, I know enough people that said, you know what, I'm going to take, um, yeah. I'm going to step away from animation to make my own stuff. And they go... Say someone left Disney, yeah. for example. Yeah, let's just say, <laughs> theoretically, someone who worked it. That would be the most yeah, yeah. foolish thing yeah, yeah, I would possibly... What an idiot. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? <laughs> no, it, it, and, and they said, I'm going to... In the end, it's like, I've, they felt so strongly about, you know, it, 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 there's this thing in Hollywood, it's like, you know, directors are trying to get their stuff funded, and they never do it, and guess what? In the end, they go, I'm going to borrow the money to yep. make it, and I'm going to make it, and I'm going to show people what's inside my head. Right, because right. I have to. But I guess I have to. But you and don't have to, yeah. like, uh, you know, you don't have to, to sell the house to no, do no, that. No, no, no. The tools, the great thing is, your laptop is now powerful enough. Oh, gosh. It's a desktop publishing it, tool. It's a, a professional editing tool. It's a, it's a, a social media global communication yeah, tool. Yeah, you're one person studio. This thing. Yeah. I tweet to people, and then, you know, someone on another country is telling someone else about something yeah. I've written. It's incredible. It's I wrote a yeah. blog post called uh, Jealousy is Creative Poison, and it was about the fears and the t that I had about seeing other people succeed, even friends of mine, that they were becoming more successful more quickly than I was, and the guilt that I felt for the jealousy that, that was sort of bubbling up inside me. And I wrote this very honestly in this post, and it got shared thousands and thousands of times. Today, 
a dozen people have come by and like fist bumped me and said, I read that at the exact right time and I felt that same way. And I felt like successful people never felt that. Right. Because no one ever wants to open up and sort of go, yeah, sometimes I get really pissed <laughs> at other people and wishing that I was them or whatever. And they said it was really cool to read that and to feel, to know that that's natural, you know, and that you can push past it. I, I, will, I, will, I will add in, 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 in terms of the corporate side of things and in, in looking into a, you know, into a career in animation, like I said, there's, there's something when you go in that environment and you're going like, okay, well, you know, you're sort of, you feel hamstrung because of the stories that they're trying to tell, whatever. But there's still enough, there's a lot of room in there for yourself, in which case the value that you're trying to get to is the fact that when you're put on a production and they say, we want you, specifically, it's because now you have a certain voice that... That's been grown that's over been, years. Yeah, yeah it, it's not immediate. But once people start to understand, this is where I want to take things, uh, you know, like, you know, on this new project I'm on, uh, which I can't say what it's it is, um, and they said, um, we want you to work on, uh, I came in, in the middle of the project, um, we want you to work on the third act of the movie, and the hardest of all to make. Act two about being really... Stick act, the landing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Act two was hard, but, you know, once you figure out an act two story, you go like, oh, we figured out act two, this is what's going to happen. Oh my god, it's this, and then, you know, they pop the champagne and everything, but you go, well, wait a minute, you still have to pay all this off in act three, what's going to happen? And they're like... Credits will happen, it'll yeah, be exactly. great. Yeah, we'll exactly, good, gag reel, right? We so, yeah, but anyway, long story short, uh, they said, Come work in our Act Three. It's like okay, I'll work in the Act Three. So then they gave me uh, twelve script pages, which is like a third of Act Three, and they said like just go with it. And I said this wouldn't have happened just a few years ago because now there's this trust of like we we know yeah. what you're going to do, do it, and and we're just going to check in on you. So I go okay, great, you know. But yeah. also understand. I think people also. I, I talk to a lot of students and their fears about graduating and going into the business. And they want to be storytellers, of course. They want to have their ideas be up on the screen, of course. Just remember that a lot of other people at the company do too, and that it is a building process of trust and growth and experience. Yeah. That as soon as you come out the door, you're not the lead designer, you're not the head of story, yeah. you're not the decision maker. If you want that kind of freedom, you've got to be completely independent. But in a corporate environment, you have to build up. If I, you know, it, it's like if I ran into a restaurant and I said, I'm going to be your chef. <laughs> and they were like, why? Who are you? And, go, Who are you? and they go, do you, you know, okay, maybe you could be the chef. Have you ever cooked before? No, but I love the Food Network, and it's my favorite thing, yeah. and I've always wanted to, and it's been my dream. You don't want to deny my dream, do you? Could you, could you learn how to cook first? No, dude, I, but I've got to do this now. This is my dream. You've got to give it to me. You're like, or you could learn to cook, and then become a sous chef and an assistant, yeah. and then someone goes and the says, process. I'm going to start my own restaurant. I think you're really awesome. Why don't you come be my chef? And that's the real way that these things happen, yeah. you know? Uh, and I think when you put it in a, in, in a way like a chef, or if I said to you, you know, I'm going to run out on the baseball field, just let me pitch, man. Come on, let me throw a ball. <laughs> well, have you ever been to throwing a baseball yeah, before? Yeah. No, but I've always wanted to. You're like, no, you got to do yeah. the, the amateur and then the double A and then the triple A and then we had the best of the best of the best and go through all those levels. It seems very obvious, but when it comes to creativity and a muse, People get this idea of, it's got to happen right now because someone's going to sing a song and we'll do a montage and then I'll be some amazing thing, right? And we've sold you that Hollywood dream, damn us, you know? And, and so people have this expectation that it's got to happen right now or it's never going to happen. And that's just not true. Let's hear it for uh, Louis Del Carmen. Woo!